While Colombia has undergone some major positive changes with the signing of the 2016 peace accord with the FARC, we see a very disturbing trend, which is that of increased uh, targeted attacks and killings of social leaders, human rights defenders, and all of the people necessary to uphold and consolidate that peace on the ground. Jimena Sanchez is the leading Colombia human rights advocate for WOLA, the Washington Office on Latin America. The Carter Center's human rights program brought Ms. Sanchez to participate in the center's 2018 Restoring Faith and Freedom Human Rights Defenders Forum and to share her message with the U.S. Senators in Washington, D.C. So since November 2016, more than 311 human rights defenders, community leaders have been killed, disproportionately Afro-Colombian and indigenous. Most of my work involves trying to prevent those attacks from taking place, uh, trying to shame um, local authorities and the Colombian government into guaranteeing that people aren't harmed, that they are receiving death threats and intimidation, and lastly, using international mechanisms that exist to guarantee that there is an investigation and prosecution um, in those cases so that they don't continue to take place. Ms. Sanchez and WOLA have been working for many years with Colombian civil society and the U.S. government to influence U.S. policies in support of peace on the one hand and protection of human rights defenders on the other. Their efforts resulted in a five-year suspension of the U.S.-Colombia Free Trade Agreement. That permitted for a lot of uh, discussion on human rights that led to two important documents, the first one being the U.S.-Colombia Labor Action Plan that specifically led to the reduction of uh, the killing of trade unionists. In addition, WOLA's advocacy helped result in the inclusion of a chapter of the peace agreement which provides for ethnic minority and indigenous people's rights. The United States ended up paying a lot of attention to our partners of the Ethnic Commission and facilitating their direct negotiation between the FARC guerrillas and the Colombian government and leading to something called the ethnic chapter which transversally applies the collective land rights and the cultural and political and economic rights of Afro-Colombian and indigenous people throughout the entire peace agreement. Ms. Sanchez calls for a reframing of human rights as integrated and mutually reinforcing, encompassing both civil and political rights, as well as economic and social rights. Because most of the times, human rights violations are the result of structural issues, and they're very often linked to economic issues. And so both the legal and illegal economic issues, as well as all the way that the uh, commercial agreements is, and militarization and so forth interplay itself in a way that leads to these violations or deepens these violations is something that needs to be considered.